Thank you very much for the introduction and for inviting me here. I'm really glad to have opportunities like that to talk about slow fashion because I consider this really important. Can you hear me very well? Yes? Good. So first of all, I would like to ask you to keep your eyes open or close them and go to your closet and search for your favorite pair of jeans. I'm sure everybody in his room has one pair, favorite pair of jeans. And maybe it's, it's there you find it, you remember when you bought it or what you already um, lived with that pair of jeans, maybe festivals or travels or something. Maybe there's a hole in it and it's in the, in the last corner of the closet and you cannot use it anymore and you're sad about it. I'm sure there's some kind of feeling and appreciation for that. And I want to talk about this feeling because that's like the key for the whole topic for me, that we refine this appreciation that we have for our favorite pair of jeans for the whole closet and for the whole textile industry because there's a lot of resources and a lot of work in there. Okay, so you can, can come back here, but bring that feeling with you. Um, by the way, that pair of jeans is the most sustainable that you can ever have. Um, I want to quote Vivienne Westwood. She kind of summarized the topic in buy less, choose well and make it last. And that's how slow fashion works. Um, yeah, my talk has three parts. First of all, I would like to tell you what I understand in slow fashion, what it is as a concept. Then I will give you an overview of what I think we have as impact in our store, as umgekrempelt here in Mannheim, and what your impact could be in everyday life and if you yeah, buy clothing, wear clothing, handle clothing. So I'm talking about sustainability in the field of the textile industry. Of course, you can take every part of lifestyle for that, but I focus on fashion. So we start with slow fashion. To understand slow fashion, of course, you need to know fast fashion because it's simply the opposite. So fast fashion is what you find everywhere in the city center. Doesn't depend on the city. In every city today in Europe, I would say, you find fast fashion. What does it mean? Everything is produced really fast and really cheap. So there's a lot of pressure on the, um, on the companies that produce clothing in the man manufacturing countries that mostly are far from here. Um, in Asia, but today we a lot of people look on Asia, so it moves slowly to Africa. Um, that we have the new cheapest production countries. So fast fashion is fam famous for very poor working conditions for environmental disasters. So if you look at the rivers in Bangladesh or China, they might have the color of the next season already. Um, you always have quantity over quality, so uh, the quality of the clothing produced decreased a lot in the last 20 years because it needs to be cheap, so we take cheaper materials and uh, the quality is really poor. I know this very well because um, in my store I do jeans repairs. So I see a lot of jeans and sometimes they only ha are a few months old and they are already um, with holes in it. So um, maybe, I'm not sure if 10 years ago, but 20 years ago we had two collections a year. There was a summer and the winter collection. Today you have 52 collections. So it's impossible to keep up with fashion trends and that's what 
um, the companies want. They want the consumer to have this feeling of always needing to buy something new. So there's this pressure on the production countries, but on the consumer as well, to buy a lot. Because, and we can do it because the t-shirt costs five euros, so it doesn't matter. So we buy it and we throw it away. Oop, yeah. So slow fashion is the opposite to that. And the main concept is less is more. And as I said in the beginning, have this appreciation again for a product that is produced uh, from, from resources and with human capital. Because sewing is always done by humans. We, there are sewing machines, but they cannot work by themselves. It's not possible. Sometimes people think that, but there's always a human being sitting behind the sewing machine to sew our cloth. So <laughs> the title of, um, of what I'm telling here is like, do sustainable products really exist? And when I talk about slow fashion, slow fashion is not a product, but it's an attitude. So um, you, that's why I say, question this. Sustainable products, um, for me, do not exist. There's always more sustainable options compar compared to something else. So for example, if you buy a conventional jean secondhand, it's more sustainable than buying a new fair jeans, so, for example. So it's an attitude, and for me, it starts with good questions. Do I really need this would be a good question. Um, what do I already have? Because sometimes we buy stuff that we already have in our, our closet, but we simply forgot. Why do I want to buy it? Many people buy clothing as a hobby or because they are frustrated and need something nice in their life. It's a huge reason for buying clothing. So, and yeah, we should rethink that concept of, um, yeah, <laughs> buying. And how often will I wear it? Because sometimes we, for example, for Halloween, you can buy a really cheap costume, or maybe you can go to the theater and borrow something really nice because you will wear this once. So there are other options, and we don't always have to buy clothing, or children's clothing is one point also where um, it would be a good idea to share it, borrow it, <laughs> rent it, whatever. And then slow fashion um, is also reduce, reuse, and repair. There's more of these R words. I'm sure you all know them. So this is how you can describe the different parts of the concept, but I will come back to this later. So, how do I do this here? The name of the store is Ungekrempelt, so I try to find a translation, which is almost impossible, but I, I thought I should translate it somehow, um, because otherwise it doesn't make sense to talk in English here and not translate uh, the name. So if you take it literally, literally, it's to roll up something, what we do with our sleeves here, or at the trousers, but in in the um, yeah, there's this, this other meaning of turning something upside down. So if you Google umgekrempelt, you will find um, sports teams, football teams that were completely changed by the new trainer, or there's a new new CEO coming somewhere, and he. Um, starts like a revolution there, so this is where, how the word is used. And before I started um, my business, I thought a lot about how the name could be for what I want to do. And I found this word from the textile, and it like has everything in it that I want to do, because all of my suppliers did this revolution. So they all do their business 
completely different than all this fast fashion style. So that's why I chose this name. And um, yeah, we stand for slow fashion, and I would like to tell you how we do that. When I started, everybody told me, like everybody, like your parents, your friends, and the people you talk to, and tell them your idea, and they said, retail is dead. Are you crazy to open a retail store? And he told me, textile industry is really difficult. And I was like, OK, but I want to do it anyway. And But it helped me somehow to pay a lot of attention on my concept. How can I find a solution? that is really a business model that will work in the future as well. Because for me, slow fashion is the future. Of course, the business models of yesterday that we had in textile industry will not work for tomorrow. So um, yeah, so I thought about something different. And this is what we do. We sell fair fashion, but it's only one part. So this is what you would call a normal textile retail store or fashion store, but with a fair concept. I added three more parts because I thought my target customers, many of them buy only second hand. Okay, I need underwear because they will not buy it second hand, but they want fair underwear. And they will always buy gifts for their friends, for their parents, and so on. So we had a look for, I call it valuable gift, gifts. They all have good social impact. They are all really nice. They are all, of course, fair produced and uh, as sustainable as possible. Even if I say there are no sustainable products. But of course, you can choose good materials and compared to something conventional, it will be the more sustainable option. Oh, sorry. Um, so I, I added this, and I said, and I started my talk with that, the most sustainable genes is the one you already have. So how can we make sure that people use their, the clothing that they already have for a longer time? So I said, OK, I want to repair your genes. I'm not a tailor, but um, I have grandmas that, teach, that taught me how to do that. Um, but I put a, a lot of practice in that, and I'm doing this for four years now, and I can tell that I'm really good at it now. So um, if you have a hole in your jeans, just um, come and bring it to us. We will repair it for you. And then, um, yeah, this is, uh, for me, it's about credibility because, of course, we could sell a new pair of jeans to the person, but we repair the old one. And um, so we have, for me, it's a long-term marketing effect and not the short-term profit. And if you say, I have a lot of holes in my jeans and I use my bicycle a lot and I always have those holes, I want to learn how to do that. You can attend the workshop and learn how to do that. So we do repair workshops and upcycling workshops, which is also um, part of the, the gifts because um, people also want to um, give a common time to their friends. So it works very well as well to, um, for Christmas, for example, you say, OK, um, we will attend the workshop together. So this is what we do. What is our impact with that? Um, if you've already been there, my, my painting skills are, hmm, but this is the store. So <laughs> on the left hand side, you see the logo. And in, inside, I wrote good jobs because we have an impact also inside our store everyday life. It's, it's completely new for me, but since two weeks, we two more people joined the team. So I have six employees now, which is six good jobs here in Mannheim. And this has an impact on the lives of this, these six people. 
and on my life because I have the support of six people and we can um, have a lot more impact with that support compared to the impact I had when I did that all alone four years ago because I started, started all by myself. I, yeah, I ran the store alone for two years. Okay, that's the impact in, inside, and then there are impacts on the supply chain, on the SDGs, and on our customers to have like the big bubbles. If we look at the supply chain, sustainability, you know this, of course, is all, always about the social, the ecological, and the economical aspect. I think, um, the social criteria or the social impact of the textile industry is quite known nowadays. Um, everybody knows that there's a lot of poor working conditions and the, um, yeah, that it's not a good thing how people are paid and so on. So how do we um, look at this? We always ask our supplier to um, have decent working conditions independent from where they produce because we have suppliers that produce in Germany but we also have suppliers that produce in India or China or Egypt or so on. Um, we support other social startups um, by buying their products. I pre always prefer um, to have impact with my business itself. Um, yeah, I prefer it and I don't do many donations. I do that as well, but um, I think it's always better to do it with the business itself. So there are other startups here in Mannheim, Fine, for example, or Balmu and um, now more and more they come to us and ask us if you want to sell their products and then we do that because we support the good impact that they have with their business. And we promote local production. So there are um, really small companies here in Mannheim and surroundings. Um, so they are really happy if somebody sells their products, otherwise they would only go to small Christmas markets and so on. So we help them to grow as well. Yeah, that is the, the social part where the problems are very well known and we have our criteria. Then, um, if there's only one thing that you take home from my talk, it would be the ecological impact that the textile industry has. Because um, after the oil industry, it's the second most polluting industry in the world. And not many people know that. So for me, it's really important to talk about that. I'm not sure if I, no, it's not here, haha. <laughs> Where do I have it? Ah, okay, it's a little after. So I, um, here's some, some examples of our suppliers. So I already mentioned Fine. Um, they are here in Mannheim um, and they produce in Portugal, for example. Malware is a um, big company that decided from the beginning to produce, to produce in India, but in a good way. Um, so they really build up a whole um, thing there. Manumama is one example here in Germany. So the founder, founder's name is Sina Trinkwalder. She's quite famous. She wrote five books. And there are 150 people working for her in Augsburg. Uh, Emmy Pantun is actually a friend of mine in Ravensburg. She's running more or less the same store in Ravensburg and it's really nice to talk to each other in exchange experiences. Um, Tubes Reloaded is one of the really small examples here from the region. So she's doing upcycling with air mattresses. And yeah, the products have a really, yeah, they are really special and I love them and they, yeah, it's 
nice upcycling. So how do we choose uh, our suppliers um, for the ecological cr criteria? Um, they need to make sure that they protect the environment somehow. Uh, depending on the product, um, you need to take different measures. Um, some of them are doing upcycling or they, they um, yeah, make research in new materials and one important part for me is also that they rethink um, the whole change about transport and packaging. Um, we made something in July. We made visible the invisible plastics <laughs> because every t-shirt, every jeans, every piece of underwear is coming to us wrapped in plastic. So if you believe that if you come to our store, this is unpackaged, unfortunately you're wrong because we unboxed it for you. We took away the plastics, but they were there before. Even in really organic and fair contexts, it's like that. Actually, my presentation is based on cardboard that comes in every piece of underwear to us. So <laughs> if you need something like that, just come to us. We have a lot. Um, so uh, I used it for scratch as well. So I, yeah, just, yeah, it's a dispo disposable product for us, but it's very sustainable to use it be because otherwise I had thrown it away r right away. So, the, but this is just, Another thing, but all our suppliers are taking care of these topics. So here, that was what I was searching for, the ecological footprint of the textile industry. So for the production of one pair of jeans, you need 8,000 liters of water, fresh drinking water. So um, we should think about buying new jeans. Um, unfortunately, I could not find until now a number for organic jeans because organic cotton needs a lot less water, but they didn't publish a number like that for one pair of organic jeans. So I can tell it's less, but I don't have the number. So even organic jeans use resources because that's also what I want to say, that um, products that are labeled sustainable are, um, yeah, not sustainable in itself. Um, so the textile industry needs more CO2 um, or carbon dioxide than international flights and shipping <laughs> together. So I, I read something about uh, if you produce 10 genes, you can fly inside Germany from Munich to Hamburg or something like that. So. People talk ab about flights all the time, but nobody talks about genes. That's why I uh, want to do that. And um, actually, yeah, this is one important topic. So water, carbon dioxide, there a lot of toxic chemicals are used in the whole production process of uh, textiles. And we have the microplastics problem. So we have not only have a problem with plastic packaging that comes to our store, but most of the textiles produced today are not from natural materials, but from plastics. So I call it poly something. Um, it's polyester, polyacryl, um, and this stuff. So it's plastic. And with every lot of laundry, you wash microplastics into our drinking water. And this is something that affects us directly here in Germany, because all the other things might be far away in production countries, but this problem is here. So um, there's one solution which is called Goopy Friend. Um, so you would have a bag where you can put those plastic clothing inside when you wash it. Um, yeah, it's only a, a, a temporary solution. We need to find another solution because, yeah, the problem is huge. And but you can like um, 
look if, what kind of clothes you have and maybe you want to buy cotton the next time. So. <clears throat> so the third part is the econo economical sustainability. So I, I talked about this before. How did I think of a different business model? So I put long-term credibility over short-term profits. That's why I repair the jeans, and that's why I tell people to ask those questions. Do you really need this? Do you really want to buy this? Does this fit in the rest of your style? And my, of course, I, I run a business, so I need to make a turnover, and then to pay my rent, and I need to pay six people. Um, but yeah, my plan is to reach more people and actually by using social media and giving talks like today, we reach this goal that we can talk to more people that are interested in the topic instead of saying, okay, we have our customers and now we do promotions and stuff like that to sell more. Because almost everyone who came to the store bought something because they were happy about the concept and happy about the products. So this is how it works for us. We do not do any sales because, in my opinion, the, the value of the product does not decrease at a certain time. And for me, um, the sales mechanism is a strong part of the fast fashion system. So um, they need to do sales because there's already coming the next collection from behind, so you need to sell this as fast as possible. And on the supplier side, I do not dic discuss wholesale prices. So, because this is also the, the what, um, if you see documentaries and like um, people who produce um, or the CEOs of the, the um, of the manufacturers there, um, they are interviewed and they say, yeah, but they put a lot of pressure on us that we always have to produce cheaper. That's why they can, they, uh, in fact, they cannot pay their workers more. So um, I said, this is also important. If a supplier comes to me and says, this is my price, I will not say, this is, this is too much, I pay less. If it's too much for me and I don't see the market for the product, I will not buy it, but I will not make pressure on any supplier to give me the product for a cheaper price, which I consider very important because this makes sure that we have a business on the same level and not me coming like um, bottom down or something. So this was the supply chain part. Of course, um, we can relate to the sustainable development goals. So this is just, yeah, you can make a, um, see, yeah, ma many different of them, but eight, 12, and 13 are the, the ones that I most relate to. So it's decent work and economic growth because economic growth is for me really strongly related to sustainability because less is more so we cannot buy fair fashion in the same amount as we buy fast fashion now and then think it's a good, we did something nice. So um, only if we buy a lot less, um, it, we can find a solution, but for me, it does not mean that there cannot be growth. I, I live a lot of growth with my store, but in a different way. Uh, so responsible consumption and production is really important to, does, to us, and of course, climate action as well. The customers. What kind of impact do we have on them? We don't only provide products, but also services as the repairs and the workshops, and inspiration. It's not a small part. Um, when people come to our store, um, it's really important that 
we talk to them and we tell them why we do things, why we sell this product and not another one. So um, we see that, that we can inspire people by living what we do there. Um, yeah, th for the product part, uh, of course, all our products are fair and sustainable in the amount that this is possible. But then the second is like um, a huge amount of criteria because today people have a lot of different lifestyles and you can never create a product that meets all of these criteria. So for me, it's important to pro provide the information so the customer can make his or her decision. So some, of course, organic is important, vegan, local, certified, um, which can be PETA or Global Organic Textile Standard, or the new one that we have now from the German government, which is called Grüner Knopf. Products can be upcycled or plastic free. For example, they would almost never be plastic free and vegan at the same time. Maybe it exists, but yeah. So we provide information about that. I'm not sure if we will get there some day that we have a hang tag or something naming all the criteria so we could, um, yeah. It's a lot of work to do, but um, yeah. So as I said, services and inspirations, we do the jeans repairs. And if you decide that you need a new pair of jeans and you buy it uh, at our store, you will have free repairs on that. So we give a warranty. For me, this is important. Of course, it's work I need to do for free, but I can check the quality of the products I sell. I would like to test all the jeans that I sell for three years before I put them in the store, but unfortunately, this is not possible. So this is my opportunity to see the jeans um, later after they were used. And, um, and that's what I mentioned uh, now, we are a contact point, kind of, to start a sustainable lifestyle. I would say there's another con good contact point in Mannheim as well, if you want to start in the food section. I would recommend to go to Eddie's, which is the, the food store where you can buy unpacked food. Um, so if you start, want to start in this field, I think they are doing more or less the same as we do, but for the food. So if you decide you want to start um, in your wardrobe and make uh, sustainable changes there, just come and we will help you to figure out the first small steps that you can take. Because nobody expects you to change your life completely from one day to another, which would not work and not be sustainable. <coughs> So, it is allowed to save the world and have fun at the same time. Um, and I think this makes our success. Because we will not tell you you should not do this and you um, are not allowed to do that and so on. But we provide nice products and we provide information and service and yeah, you can just come and see if there's something for you. Mm, as I said in the beginning, the most sustainable jeans that you can have is the one already in your closet. So please wear it. If it doesn't fit you anymore, take care that somebody else can wear it because it would be a pity to leave it in the closet and not wearing it. If there's a hole, repair it. We can do that for you or learn how you can do that. So there I'm already in your field. What might be your impact in the field of fashion? Because um, it's about responsible consumption a lot. And what we can see, the, the big players in the city centers, they are starting to react because um, all of a sudden they are, green collections and organic cotton in small quantities and stuff like that. And it's not because they, they want to do that, but they see that 
consumers are interested in that, so they do it. Reduce. Ask yourself, do I need this and why do I buy it? Um, yeah, am I frustrated or do I really need this? Reuse things. Clothing is not a disposable product, which it became in the last 20 years. You can buy a t-shirt, wear it once and then throw it away. If you don't use it, give it to someone else. I just say that it's a pity the amount, the huge amount of clothing that we have in our closets that is never worn. Actually, 40% of the, um, the clothing that we buy in Germany will never be worn. So we, we throw it, it goes to the, the old clothing um, collections with the price tag on it. So this, and it's huge amounts. Share is also a good concept, not only in clothing, but you see it in many different areas of lifestyle. If you need it only once, that's what I told you before, uh, from the Halloween costume maybe, maybe you can borrow it or you can rent it. When my brother became a father, he told me this, some, I forgot the name, but he said we can rent the very good Merino wool children's clothing. Ah, it's called Räubersachen. Um, so, yeah, they, you could choose in which stage you want to pay for the product. So you can have it new, you pay more, but then you give it back and then the next um, person can have it. Or if you take the final stage, you can keep it in the end, but you pay a lot less than in the beginning. So I thought this is really cool because it's normal that children don't wear their clothing a lot because they grow and then it doesn't fit. Swap. Organize a clothing swap. There are really um, a lot of swaps here in Mannheim, also at university. Um, the biggest I know is at the Jugendkulturzentrum Forum, which I recommend a lot, because if it's a big swap, there's a lot of possibilities. So when I need new clothing, actually I go there, and there I have my experimental field of fashion, and I some times take things that I would never buy in the store and I just take them and if I realize that I don't use them, I just bring them back the next time. So this is a good possibility to have fun with fashion without using new resources and without using money, by the way. So it's completely free. And even if you cannot bring something, there's always enough. Declutter your wardrobe and offer things to your friends. This is really, if you don't know where to start, start from what you have and give half of it away because um, if you are more or less normal person, you have too much because all of us have too much clothing in their wardrobes. Um. Buying second hand is a really good idea, pre-loved products are the most sustainable ones to buy. So um, that's why I said my target group um, loves secondhand shopping and only the underwear, um, there it stops. Um, but this is a really good idea because, um, yeah, it's no new resources needed. Find your style and discover vintage treasures. So don't try to keep up with fashion trends. <laughs> since it is impossible and um, I prefer to, yeah, to develop an own style. It can be a lot nicer than um, yeah, trying to keep up with fashion that, is, that changes every week. Repair. I don't know if you know the uh, concept of repair cafes. I like that a lot. Um, because there you have people that know how to repair things and you can learn how to do that. Of course, you can attend our workshops to learn it as well if it's about jeans. And find shops in your town where you can get things repaired. Sometimes people tell me, 
oh, it's a pity I'm not in Mannheim, your shop is so far away. I mean, I did not invent jeans repairs. There's maybe 50 stores in Mannheim where you can get your jeans repairs repaired. Every tailor does that. But they don't put it on their website, so you cannot Google it. And that's where the difference is. That's why people come to us uh, with their jeans. Because, yeah, you can find us on Google with that topic. That's the only difference. Recycled. Recycled, bring your old clothing to a good collecting point. This could be a completely new talk, so I just very briefly want to mention that. There's one website which is called Verwertung. Um, old clothing is a huge problem as well because we destroy the markets, for example, in Africa with that. So please check that you don't put it at, in any collecting point because we have these huge bins on the streets. Um, there are good ones and bad ones. So check on Verwertung if, if it's a good one. Be aware of greenwashing. As I already mentioned, the huge companies start to um, sell green products as well. Um, especially in the field of recycling, there are some big retailers that tell you, okay, bring us your old clothing, we will recycle it. And what do you get for it? You get 10% discount on your new purchase, which is fast fashion deluxe. Um, so yeah, just be aware, aware that this is not really sustainable, but it's pure greenwashing. Because recycling is not possible. They can do, um, yeah, like cleaning cloth out of that, but your old jeans will not be a new jeans again. Don't believe them. It's not possible technically. Rethink, find joy in re redesigning your lifestyle. As I said, saving the world um, is possible and you can have fun at the same time. Challenge the status quo and ask for more sustainable solutions. In the small stores, but in the normal big retail stores as well. Because as we see, things change. And big companies always say, Nobody's interested in that. And the more we ask, the more we show that we are interested in sustainable solutions and things will change and they will not be able to say anymore that we are not interested in that. If you want more inspiration,